Morning everybody, here we are in the bleak midwinter. <laughs> no, it's not bleak at all. We've got so much to do. I ain't got time to be bleaky, bleaky. <laughs> so, I mean, pretty bit ain't pretty. It's because it's winter. Um, and uh, most things have been hit by quite, we've had a couple of really good frosts, but wind, wet, the lot. Um, so I've trimmed my hedge. That's my attempt at making that look like um, uh, a surf, a wave. Right, so let's have a quick squidge rain and see how things are going. This this basket had pansies in it, if you remember, and I've trimmed them. I, I broke the pansies up and replanted them, and it looks like that's worked. Whether I'm going to get pansies or not, I don't know. There's my horse poo for the, for the scouts. <laughs> And I've made a bit of a picking today. Um, got a nice pepper there, not quite ripe. Um, onion, a couple of leeks. Oh, and some cake gooseberry. That. Is that wind? Oh, it's cold wind too. And in the cold frame, I've got some lettuces coming on there. Win winter, winter density, I think. I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> Who cares? No lettuce. Um, then all of this wants to tidy up. There's another basket there. Look with something. How did that get there? Look. Um, with, with the pansies in. Um, and then um, all of this lot will probably now go. I'll probably put them inside. Then inside. Uh, well, I've still got a bit of colour. There we go. Um, and they're all good and good, all needs potting on. There's my onions in storage, <laughs> uh, as are my potatoes as well. Oh, um, yeah, the potatoes are stored in the shed in the dark. And as you can see, they're in cloth, cloth bags. Oh, we've got some more in there and some in there, look. Uh, and a few there. And then I've got a, full, a bag full there. So, potatoes. This year were really good. And there's the last couple of... Re there's a couple of potatoes that were a bit green. They were near the top. Um, I should use them as seed potatoes. Don't waste anything. Um, and there's a couple, my last couple of cucumbers. Let's go into the greenies. Oh, before we go, let's pop home and have a look at the greenies at home. I got some croissants. These are, oh, they were from seed. The hollyhocks were from seed. The croissants were little cuttings. Um, and then I've sewn up some raw beans in these milk containers. Milk containers. Well, milk. <laughs> Milk, well, they were, and orange juice <laughs> boxes, um, and that's it. Oh, down here, I've just got a few, a few radishes <laughs> for the winter. So, so what I've done is I've got a bucket full of compost from the compost bins, and what I'm doing now is I'm sieving it. Oh, we've got some bits of. It's a thing. I'm it. But I'm mixing it with sand. So, like a bit and a bit and a bit and a bit. And hopefully, and then, just to show you quickly. And then that's what I'm making. I'm making potting compost or seed compost. Yeah, and I'm hopefully. Because this is from bins and the bins got hot, hopefully there aren't any weeds in there. Anyway, that's that then. And there's me wine all uh, all working away. There we go, that's what I've done here. Let's go back to the allotment. Okay, that was quick, wasn't it? Back we come. Yeah, so in here, I haven't got much going on here, but I've got a Christmas Christmas potato. I knew you couldn't say that, and I haven't had a drop yet. Christmas potato coming on. It's looking okay. Don't think I'm going to be digging the potatoes for Christmas. But who knows, I should just scrape the soil away and have a look. Um, 
but roast potatoes, <laughs> not new potatoes for Christmas, and there the reds are better. Right, um, then I saw, I've got a bit of colour here, that's one that I potted on. Um, uh, <laughs> my aloe vera is not looking too happy, nor is my fly catcher, it don't like this cold. Um, and then I've, I've done quite a few cuttings um, of geraniums. Um, then I've got my grapevine, which I'm going to have another go at grafting. I did have success last year, and I gave it to Alex, a chap with allotment close by, um, and he's he had actually had grapes on it. Um, that's so uh, I was quite pleased with that. Then my peppers are all but finished. There's a few there, just scratchy ones. Um, oh, I tell you what, I've got my sweet peas. I put some sweet peas in, and they're just beginning to show. Look. Um, the chilli peppers, I've stopped watering them now, just and let them dry out um, and ripen. Then these peppers, oh, I've got one big big green one there, look, but that wants... Uh, I don't know, I'll leave it and see what happens. Uh, these peppers here have all but finished. I'm going to try cutting them down and, and overwinter them, just to see. Um, and then I've got some carrots that I sowed in a bin here all the way back probably September, October and um, you'll see them on the last video um, so I'm hoping to get have, have spring carrots oh there's my greenhouse heater oh, see the candle candle light down there <laughs> let's lift it up it just gets it just gets warm the pot gets warm there oh that one's just tipping out and was it to go put itself out? Yeah. And back on the, you go. And then I've got a brick here um, uh, that I can warm up. Let, let me lift that up there. There we go. And I can light. I can put in there. I think I've made a video to show how I've done it. Um, I'll put charcoal in there. And then I'll put that brick on it and it warms it up and it stays warm. It stays warm for a blinking long time. The bucket of water is so that the water warms up, if it's a sunny day of course, um, but it warms up and it, it, it then radiates the heat through, through the night. Well, let's now go around the plot and have a look what we've got. Um, there's some more pansies there that I, I cut up. Um, they all seem to be working as well. Whether I'm going to get pansies or not, I don't know. But there's one there, and look, and he's rewarded me with with a flower. Have <laughs> <hate> that then. <laughs> so I'm moving on then. Ah, oh, I did put in. I had some peas that were that dried on the plants, so I sowed them, and they're growing. And once again, you've just got to keep going for it, haven't you? And it does mean to say, oh, let's move that bit of glass. Oh, a bit of bit of glass, a bit of plastic. As you can see, they're coming up. Um, so I will be able to put a bit of glass over the top of that uh, and keep them through. So nice early peas. I'm aiming to get a pea by the fifth of May. <laughs> right, and my shallots are all showing. Um, I know you're supposed to put them in on the shortest day. Well, that's the folklore, but uh, I'll put them in on a fairly short day. <laughs> right, onwards and upwards. Um, this this was my strawberry bed. Um, um, so what I did was, I've covered it in cardboard. There's a bit there that's, that's come on through. Um, and seaweed and horse poo, because that's gonna be my early potatoes. So, onwards and upwards. Long as anyway, and then generally speaking, I've just prepared the beds. That one I've just covered with seaweed just to keep the weeds down. This bed, um, oh, I've got a parsnip there that I've left to go to seed because for some reason I find that the seeds of a parsnip that you've let to go to seed on your plot they seem to germinate a lot easier than the seeds from packets. So, sorry, um seed packet people <laughs> but that's what it is I've still got a few a few beetroot there um, that I'll, I'll just leave them there and 
I just take a couple every week. That way you've got fresh beetroot all the time. So I don't pickle it. Well, I do, but I don't pickle much. My carrot bed that was here, super successful. Carrots with eight carrot fly. Um, but now that's almost finished now. My next thing I should do to that is put some seaweed on there, just a, a thin layer of about three inches. I should put cardboard on top of the seaweed and then I shall sieve and make six inches of really, really nice sandy carrotes type soil. Then all my volunteer potatoes, you, you always miss a few and they try and grow. I've dug them, potted them and I've put them in under this cover. As you can see there's a there's a cover there. It's, it's where I grew tomatoes and stuff last year. Um, and we'll see what happens. Can't lose, can I? There's, there's probably little baby potatoes on them already. Right then, grapevines, they need, they need pruning. Um, I've come to the conclusion that different vines like different uh, pruning different methods. Um, I think I, I call it the Goya, I'm not sure if I've said it right, um, or the cordon method. Um, and that last year, as you can see, I cordoned that. Um, well, I did both. I had a bit of cordon and I had a little bit of a bit of goya. Oh yeah. Then I've got one single spray. I've covered the, covered the spray with that bit of wire because the pigeons settle on the spray and eat the top leaves, which I don't mind at all, but they poo as they do it. Um, and I don't want that on my sprays. So then that was that. That was the first year of that um, asparagus bed um, and they were the asparagus that I brought on um, in pots um, and I think it, well it looks successful all the asparagus is curling over now anyway um, so that looks and I've covered that with seaweed just to keep the just to keep the weeds down and that grapevine that's me Bacchus um, so that wants that one's pruning and then on we go round here and that was my asparagus bed um, and then up here was my early potatoes and that was seaweed and horse poo and soil I've dug that out and I've spread that now on the asparagus bed so that's got the benefit of that of that soil now I may um, put some seaweed on the top of that as well mostly because the, the, the soil if there is any goodness in that soil which I'm sure there is it's going to wash through I want it down onto the roots anyway so um, when I cut I've cut all the all the foliage off the asparagus and I'm saving that I'm using that to um, to put rain me strawberries to keep them up off the soil so what else we got here? Oh, that compost bin is the is pallets. I love them. Um, it really does make a cracking compost bin. Um, and what the benefit of that is, the compost bin's on the soil. Um, and then next year I can move that and put it put it somewhere else. And then I'll use that soil. That soil have the goodness in it. Probably put a pumpkin there. And then there's my Cape gooseberry. It's been really good this year. It was slow to get going, um, but I've had loads of loads of gooseberries off it. Um, that's it. Let's go on round there. Uh, round the bottom of these grapevines, I've got everlasting leeks. I've never, I haven't, I haven't eaten any yet, but <laughs> they just keep spreading and spreading. <laughs> I probably will. Um, then the cabbage spot on my brassica bed. I've got a couple of cabbages that I'm going to use for um, for sauerkraut and I've got a collie up. How about that? I'm quite pleased with that. That one's going to get picked this afternoon. Also, um, it's just an idea. I've, I've potted up some mint um, and I can move the mint around. It just keeps various things off the, the smell of the mint. And once again, I've wired over the... It, it looks a little bit DIY, but... Um, the scrapes. So, moving on, then my leek bed is looking good. These leeks are, I put them in quite late, 
I put them in so that I'd have leaks um, into the spring and then the oh I've got some more stuff to make a to, to improve my raised beds then my strawberry bed here um, I've I've taken some runners um, and extended the strawberry bed that needs a bit of a weeding as well and this this compost bin is all ready to be dug out I know I've trimmed the, the fig tree but it's all ready to be dug out and then that soil will go where the potatoes are going to go then I've got um, my spinach bed here I've been picking this quite heavily I like spinach. Uh, oh, and the fruit bushes. The fig. I'm not really sure what I should be doing with this fig. I need to swat it up. So there's a there's a an afternoon one day looking on YouTube to swat up um, what I should be doing with my fig tree. And then my fruit bushes. Um, that was the red currant bush. It needs it needs a lot of attention. I've already trimmed out my gooseberry bush and my raspberries. I've cut them back. Um, and then I've got a black currant and a red currant there. Um, uh, I've, I've pruned that one up. I'm not sure which way round it is. I know you do red currants or black currants in the spring and the other one in the autumn. But well, I need to. Well, I've, I've done it, so I hope I've done it right. Then my strawberry bed off the ground, so as to stop the wood lice getting into the strawberries, worked a treat. So that now needs a bit of a tidy up and preparing ready for the spring. Then, then, oh I have labelled up, I've labelled up, I've also made, um, uh, I've also made a plan, oh I'll show you that in a minute. Oh there we go, so there's my plan. It just gives me some idea of what's going to go where. Um, whilst you're sitting at home watching something boring on the television you can work it out um, and it just gives you it gives you a guide it, 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 it saves um, putting things in and saying oh I wish I hadn't put that there oh and there's my BID <laughs> so there we go oh I also have myself a little note board as well courgettes in this plot it's because those onions will be finished or if not finished before the courgettes go in, certainly before the courgettes grow big enough to, to take over the plot. So I've got onions in there and then I've got a bit of spinach at the far end there. That spinach will be probably come out by March because it will go to seed. And then this one is potatoes, which I've already spread seaweed and horse poo on it. Um, and, and I've got a bin there um, that I've got stable um, when you're in there, stable cleans. Um, I'm just going to let that rot down and then I'll put a potato in it and just leave it there. Um, onions are in. That is the um, the Shen, Shensu onions. Um, and they're looking, they're looking successful. And then I've got my garlics here. That's elephant garlic. And it, it's looking, looking like elephant garlic too. And then I've got some ordinary Isle of Wight garlic down it there. The elephant garlic is a lot more milder than the Isle of Wight garlic, so I, I grew, I grow to both. The elephant garlic, I did an experiment only because somebody said give it a go. I put it on a barbecue, the whole clove on the barbecue. It was blinking lovely, it all got eaten. Then I've got, <laughs> there's another volunteer potato there that's been dug up and potted up. Then my strawberry bed, once again, this strawberry pot is the one to, that I've, done to um, avoid the wood lice eating the strawberries and it's worked a treat so they don't like climbing up that the plastic or climbing around the the big sheet of plastic um, my fruit trees were absolutely tremendous this year uh, no complaints at all I need to get in there and prune them out but I need to swat up once again to make sure that I'm doing it at the right time of the year then this was um this was a, a, an attempt at my strawberry bed, um, but it, it actually got, this end, it actually got too hot for the strawberries. Um, it's because this is well sheltered out of the wind and, um, and, and the, the slate acts like a, um, a wick in both directions. It, 
it it um it wicks the soil it wicks this moisture out of the soil but it also transfer the heat down through the soil so i'm not quite sure what i think this is going to be my pumpkin bed this coming year so those strawberries i'll leave them there and um, in the hope they make a few strawberries and and then as soon as the strawberries are finished up like sort of june or july um, i'll dig them out and by then the pumpkins will be taking over the bed then the me, me grape finds at this end me red grapes they were they were okay this year i wouldn't say they were brilliant they were just okay pond is happy and me um yeah pond's happy the parsnips well I've had a few parsnips from here. The ones that I was growing for the show through there, we didn't have a show this year, so I'm not quite sure. I'm going to dig that one out just for fun. <laughs> I've got a feeling it's going to be big. That was sown way back in January. <laughs> so I might need an excavator to dig that one out, yeah. Um, right, let's go and have a look at the bees. The bees, I hope, are happy. Yeah, they're... They're all tucked up inside there, out, out of the out of the cold. Oh, there's one outside. Look, and there's a few a few on the floor dead. Well, that's what happens this time of the year. But they made more honey from September to November than they had through the summer. Um, that may be because they were building up numbers. Uh, we didn't have swarms this year, like last year. Um, so, but it, it's, yep, yeah, they're okay. So what I've done is I've kept the, I've kept the frame of honey um, and, uh, and then I shall inspect to see if, if they need feeding through the winter. And if they do, I can feed them with their honey, not, uh, not sugar. <laughs> anyway, there is, there's the plot. Happy gardening. Take it, go careful, see you in the summer, in the spring. Bye.